from the World Wide Web or your smartphone or your computer. We welcome you to the El Bethel Baptist Church. It's Sunday morning here, 10 a.m. We say Eastern Time. Thanks for dropping in. It's our prayer that God's going to richly bless you today. David, come on, let's sing, and let's have a wonderful time as we worship the Lord. Welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you're here. And this is this uh, beautiful day outside. Let's have a beautiful day inside. Let's open up our hearts, open up our minds, and just let God move in this place. Now, before we get started, I want everyone to say happy anniversary to my wife, Carrie. Happy anniversary. As she said, uh, it's been 23 years of hard labor living with me. So. <laughs> um, you can offer your condolences to her later. Please stand and join us. We'll open up our service with We Will Glorify. Thank you. 
I know you mean it this morning. Word is his name. Speak to one another. We're glad you're here. Shake hands with a dozen, a baker's dozen folks today. We're glad to welcome you. Welcome. Body has put before you three names to serve on our nominating team. Secondly, uh, you will be uh, be uh, voting. How many have you gotten the ballots? Have we gotten those ballots out yet, Mark? We have not yet. Okay, wonderful. Because what we're going to do uh, toward the end of the service. Now, not during the sermon. <laughs> All right, but at the end, you're going to get a piece of paper, and we want to see how alert. And responsive you are to that. You're going to put down the names of four men. All right? Four men. Four men. Four men. Though it says three, <laughs> we did that just to make sure you're listening. Four men. If you put five names down, your ballot is thrown out. Okay, that's, it's thrown out. Five names, no, 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 or more. But four men, three men you could do, two men, one men. Five, if you put more than four names, we discard the ballot, okay? That way to make it fair, because we would have a clue who you'd want. And uh, maybe the Lord would, but we wouldn't. But also, and then we'll take care of a little bit of business. Uh, a couple of things we want to remind you, we got that low country ball. Don't we, David, at the end of the month? Our dear friend Mike Runyon's going to be with us. You'll enjoy that. Please, if you haven't given David an extra five, please do, because the only thing I like in low country balls is shrimp. So anyway, uh, what else are you putting in that? What do you put in a low country ball? Corn. Corn? Salt. 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 <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to have a big time on that night. You want to be here for that, are you? You don't, you don't want to miss that. And uh, you can see the information that is there. I do want to encourage all our deacons, whether you're actively serving or if you're just taking a little respite, Jim Henry, a uh, good friend of mine, will be with us at uh, the Fairview Baptist Church on the 14th of August. And it's about a three-hour deacon workshop. You will enjoy, if you've never heard of Dr. Henry, great man. 
Uh, he was he retired from First Baptist Church in Orlando, Florida, many many years ago, and uh, you will want to hear him, and you will be blessed. Uh, and so, all of our deacons, whether you're actively serving or inactively serving, uh, I want to encourage you, uh, please. If you uh, you can read all the other announcements, I don't need to bore you with that. I do want to tell you this: our our, our uh, parking lot most important lot in the church, our playground for children is coming along. And I want to thank uh, Jordan and Barry Bush in particular, I want to thank you for all that mulch that's back there in the laying out of it. I mean, it's, it's very, very, very important. And uh, we have a whole lot more to work on. We have a lot of stuff yet to buy. You can see our thermometer over there. We're right at $8,000, somewhere there about on the playground fund, but I know you're going to help us and uh, we're excited about that because of all that we think about the, the possibility of our preschool we, we start thinking about Awana we start thinking about having children flooding this place once again and that can happen alright we, uh, we hope and pray that uh, you will continue doing your part not only in tithes and auctions but uh, you're going you're gonna to help us with that who had the anniversary Carrie you had an anniversary the don't hide, honey. Why did you have an anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> and and it was what twenty three years. Twenty three. You robbed the cradle. She was what six years old or something. And uh, she and David had twenty three years. But also, not only do they have it today, but Jordan, you and Brooke. Have an anniversary today. Is that right? Six years. All right, Carrie, step outside the door, please. Step outside the door. If you don't, I'm going to pull you up there. Stand. David, come up here. Stand. Brooke, Jordan, stand. We're going to sing happy anniversary to, to the same tune of happy birthday. Brooke, I, 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 I wouldn't stand either. But please stand if you would. All right. And we're going to sing to these two and to these two. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Now, I know for Carrie and David, 23 years, it seems to be six years. And for Brooke and Jordan, it's six years, but it seems to be she told me 23 years. <laughs> anyways, anyways, happy anniversary, and uh, may there be many, many, many more. Uh, we're going to get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. You know, Nikki Russell, I believe, is in the hospital. She's uh, she's had some problems with the rollback. Her sister took her. As I understand, she's in the hospital. You want to pray for her? Pray for yourself, Joe. Uh, he's in hospice is with him at home, and we want to keep him in our prayers, please, if you would. And uh, maybe the many unspoken requests, the request, for, we want to remember our missionaries who serve not only in this great country of ours, but around the world. We want to pray for International Mission Board missionaries all over the world. And uh, even as we do, and as we begin praying, we're coming toward the end of July. Right now, this Sunday, you begin thinking, now, now, what will my body living offering be? Maybe start putting some money aside. If we have 20 weeks between now and the time of body moon, and if you put $10 a week aside, put it in a sock, put it somewhere, you realize that would be $200. Maybe that would be your biggest gift ever. But start thinking this Sunday about Lottie Moon, which comes in December. All right? I want you to do that. This morning, we're going to the Lord in prayer, and I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Lord, 
merciful and mighty, awesome God. Loving Father, before you we've come to worship. We've come into this wonderful edifice that is used for so many activities and opportunities. It's our house of worship where we worship you. It's our house of recreation where we play basketball and we dance and we praise your name in various types of music. But it is your house of prayer. And I pray that it will always be first and foremost a house of prayer. Because more things are brought about by prayer than this world could ever imagine. I pray that as a church family, prayer will always be our first response, not our last resort. And that we understand when we pray, we're talking, communicating. We're lifting our eyes and our voices, as the psalmist said, under the hills from whence comes our strength. Lord, I pray today for those who would be under the weather. We call a couple of names, there may be others. We want to thank you for these who have celebrated anniversaries, continue to make their, their lives stronger day by day. We want to thank you for our church and how our people continue to respond to the needs that we have. Because, Lord, when we respond to the needs, not our wants, we're talking about the needs even though we may have to go way beyond the time, somehow or another, you always seem to bless us. And if we just have a certain amount of dollars, when we go beyond the call, you seem to just multiply what we have remaining. Somehow or another, we always have enough. We thank you for heavenly mathematics and not earthly economics. Now I pray that you continue to bless our service, bless David and the choir, as we seek to honor your name. Oh, we're in love with you, Lord Jesus. We're in love with you. Thank you so much for loving us. That is our prayer. We make it in Jesus' sweet, precious, wonderful, holy name. Amen.
and all God's people said, Thank you, David, for singing today. Mitch did a great job. Of course, Bill and Gloria always do a good job. And let's see, I have a sermon somewhere. If so, Sheila, we appreciate you being on the piano. Doesn't she do a great job? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Give her a hand. Amen. And it's, it's, it's really wonderful. And I looked over there and I started to say, well, hey, Reed. And I said, well, now, Reed's not that pretty. So anyway, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for filling in. Where's Reed? He didn't run off and get married, did he? You know, he's in love. You don't believe it, just look at him. Just watch the way he walks. He's starry eyed. Just, you know, isn't that wonderful to see? Are you still like that? I am. <laughs> or I'm a goblin. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we uh, <laughs> don't believe the things he says. We had the. We, thank you so much for allowing us to be away that past week. I appreciate Dr. Rogers uh, filling in, the Reverend Long filling in for us on Wednesday night. And uh, appreciate the fact that you're here this morning as well. We uh, asked you for Papa's here first and is with us. We're so glad to have him here and his wife. Uh, well, we're just glad to have all of you here. Now listen to me. School's going to start soon. You know what we need to do? We need to plan a Sunday. Now listen up. Uh, we'll talk about this in our leadership development, uh, our team leadership team meeting. When is that? Wednesday night. What time? 8 o'clock. Leadership team, what time is it? Eight On what day? We need to plan for a fill every chair Sunday. Did you hear me? Fill every chair with a live human being, all right? <laughs> not an animal and not a picture, but a real live person. And uh, we, we'll, we'll be talking about that soon. That'll be welcome. We were down at the beach. This, we, we went to Destin, Florida. And uh, we, we've been going to Destin, I guess, since we lived in Birmingham. And uh, it's a lot faster from Birmingham to Destin than it is from here. Let's fly. And um, it's, it's 10 hours, a long 10 hour drive. And uh, we had a lot of fun. But you know something? I, I, I was down there at the beach, and I have figured I could, be, I could become a millionaire. All I need to make a woman's bathing suit is some kite string <laughs> and three washcloths. <laughs> Sell it for $100. Not, I could. I could be a millionaire. And uh, I'm glad my dear grandma was gone. Because <laughs> if I'd have taken her down there, I'd have brought her back in a box if she'd have gone to the beach. I did hear that. But thank you. We had a wonderful time. And uh, we were with our children and grandkids. And it really, really was a great time. Now, listen, a couple of things at the end of the service. We'll, we'll hand out a ballot in our. Our chairman will give you directions on that. I've already said that, but he'll re-emphasize that. And uh, a couple of other items we'll take good care of. All right. This morning, listen now and follow me, the names of God from A to Z. No, this isn't a Dr. Seuss a rhyme, nor is it a Dr. Little John rhyme. It's just something that I have redone and retooled from time to time. Listen now and follow me, the names of God from A to Z. And before we stand and read scripture, how about the singing the song that we all know? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Stand as we go to the Bible's reading, if you're able. To the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8, and then we'll quickly turn over to chapter 22, verse 13. And uh, with that understanding, follow along with me as we read Revelation 1. Don't you ever put the S on it. Say the word, say it, Revelation, say it. Revelation. Say it again. 
Don't you ever put the S on it. Don't you ever put If you do, if I die, I'll haunt you if you still have to. Don't you ever say that. It is not revelations. That is something God does and gives to you and me and the prophets of old. The book of Revelation is singular. Don't put an S on it ever. Okay? Here we go. From uh, chapter 1, verse 8, you know it well. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And then turn with me, please, over there to Revelation chapter 22. <laughs> and once again, we'll say it's almost verbatim the same voice, the same verse again. And follow along with me as I read. This, my fingers don't work like they used to. Here it goes, third, verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. May God bless us the reading of this holy inspired air of every word. And now would you bow your heads as we pray. Loving Father, thank you for allowing us to be in your house this day. Thank you for the beauty of the day. And thank you for God's people. How we love one another. And how we're asking you to continue your multiple blessings on us as a congregation. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for loving us. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The noted historian, H.G. Wells, made a list of the ten greatest men who had ever lived in history. And the number one name that was on his list was the name Jesus Christ. But then Jesus Christ doesn't belong on anybody's list. For you see, he is Jesus the first, he is Jesus the last. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Jesus said that, we just read it. That the Alpha and Omega, the Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. The Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet, much like ours, has 26 letters. And those 26 letters, scholars and students and prophets of old and, and New Testament writers use 26 letters to produce the greatest library the world will ever know. And its supreme overseer and its author is Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Wake up, Baptist. Come on now. All right. We don't go to sleep in here on Sunday morning. All right. You know, Jimmy Robbins used to be down there at, at uh, on the, the church there in Calpins. I forget the name of it. And uh, I, your first church I ever served was First Baptist Church of Calpins in 1971. I was 18 years old. And you know, Jimmy Robin, he caught somebody sleeping in his service. <laughs> you know what he did? He took his shoe off and flipped it out of the <laughs> I don't do that here. But he, he really did. No, he did. And 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 he he did lots of things. When he had a when when they had a uh, special offering day, they didn't take it up. He said, I don't like little things of people. And I agree with that. You know, Martin Luther King said, beware of little thinking people. I agree with that. When, when they had special offering Sunday, you know what he did? He brought wheelbarrows into the church. Yeah. He didn't have offering plates. Why? Because he believed and he just knew his people were going to give sacrificially. And they did. When we talk about the names of God, let's get back to where we need to be. Oh, I could go through all the names of Abba Father. I, I could go back to El Young. I could go back to El Shaddai and Jehovah Shalom, uh, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Tishkin. All of those names, I could go 21 names of God that I have found. But what I want to do this morning is something, this is just something that little John does from time to time. I look at every letter of the alphabet. And I want to ascribe the name of God 
that I sense, that I would say, that I would worship with, I'm going to use all 26 letters of our alphabet, and I'm going to ascribe the name of God to every one of those letters. So if you're ready, listen now and follow me. The names of God from A to Z. The first letter of the alphabet is the letter A, and I ascribe the name Awesome. Our God is an awesome God. Isn't that the way that song goes, David? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. God is awesome. You only need to look at nature and see that. You only need it to look at the beautiful blue-green sea that's past. All you need to see is the beauty of God's people. All you need to see is the beauty of God's houses of worship. And you understand how awesome God is. The psalmist said it this way in Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. This God's awesome. I'm just here to tell you, he is an awesome God. The Lord will, this is what the Bible says in Deuteronomy, the Lord will open the heavens and, and the storehouse of his bounty and it will rain on your land and on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. Listen to me, God is an awesome God. Let her be. I said, I used two words there. The first word is bountiful. I believe God is a bountiful God for he gives us all that we need. And sometimes he'll give us all that he wants. But also I said the letter B would stand for beautiful. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful God Almighty. He is nobody's ever seen the face of God. Oh, they've got the glimpse of the face of God. But let me tell you something. To see the face of God before you die, you will just usher in your death. We've only gotten glimpses of the faith of God. And yet Isaiah in 52 verse 7 says it this way. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet, are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good. Let me tell you something. God is beautiful. If I were to add another B, you would know it. The bread of life. Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. One of the ego I need statements that are made by the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of, of the book of John. There are seven ego I me, I am statements, I am the good shepherd. And he said, I am the bread of life. So that is what I say for the letter B. Bountiful, beautiful, the bread of life, the letter C. I still had to use two words here. I had to use the word comforter. Isn't that what John 14, 16 says? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. John 16, verse 26, but the comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Let me tell you something. The name of God for me is comforter, but also another letter C is that God is compassionate. And if anybody understands the compassion of Almighty God, I do. <laughs> he could have thrown me under the bus. <laughs> I told you he wouldn't put me in jail. He'd throw me under the jail and cover me up with brick and mortar. I mean, God is compassion. God is my comforter. All right, the letter D. I said God is my deliverer. My deliverer. Our loving Heavenly Father is the only one strong enough to deliver us from all our temptations. He is only the only deliverer who can take us from all of our afflictions, who can protect us from all the enemies of the world. That's what the deliverer does. He delivers us. And, and, in, and let me just tell you something. Listen, prime... On Amazon didn't have anything on God to deliver. I want you to know that, okay? Amazon Prime might be wonderful and can deliver in 24 hours. I'm here to tell you God Almighty can deliver in the blink of an eye. He's deliverer. That's the name that I ascribe to the letter D. Psalm 18 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress. What else does it say? My deliverer. My God and my strength. 
Amen and amen. The letter E. I ascribe the name of God everlasting. In this life, nothing lasts forever. Nothing. I don't care how many flowers you put out in your front yard, how much miracle grow you put on it, one day that miracle's gonna run out and that flower's gonna die. There's only one thing everlasting and that's eternal life. And God brought everlasting life. He is the eternal God. And when I see that letter E, I know that that means I have an everlasting life, and I have everlasting life. And, and when I was age 13, I died to myself, and I died to this world, and at that moment I entered into everlasting life. So that when I die, I just simply close my eyes and open my eyes in glory. The letter E, I see God as being everlasting. The letter F, are you still with me on the alphabet? The letter F, what would it be for you? For me, I say faithful. God is so faithful to the very end. You know that? He, he, he brought us into this world and he'll take us out of this world. All right, that's the fact. But God is faithful. I'm not talking about my faithfulness to him. I'm talking about how faithful God is always. We sing it over and over. Great is thy what? Faithful. When I see the letter F in the alphabet and I think of the names of God, I think about a faithful God. I think about his faithfulness. I think about how faithful he has been to me. And I, I never forget what, what, the, what the Lord Jesus said. He said to me, Biddy, little John, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Ha uh ha. -huh. He's faithful. He's faithful. The letter G. I ascribe the name great. He's a great God. How great is our God. Didn't know we sing that in that uh, Michael Smith. How great is our God. He's great. I know we use that word and say, well, that's a great idea. That's a great place. But let me tell you something. Great is ascribed to God. God is great. In the words of the psalmist, Psalm 48, verse 1, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. The letter G, the letter H. You know what I ascribe to that letter? Holy. Holy. Don't you remember singing that so often when all we had back when, when we were little kids? Holy, holy, holy. What happened to holiness? What happened to reverencing a holy God? Psalm 99 says, Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. The letter H stands for holy. Holy, holy. The letter I stands for I am. You remember when Moses was trying to jerk his responsibility and he said to God, well, God, who, who, who do I say has authorized me? And God said, you just tell them the great I am. I sent you. you see, I ascribe the name I am to the letter I all right. The letter J. Jehovah. This is one of the names of God that he himself proclaimed to be his name. Exodus tells us in chapter 6, and God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but my name Jehovah was not known to them. I could go on, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Ja, Shalom, Jehovah Shama, on and on and on. Jehovah, it means God, God is there, God is here. Hail Vah, we say in Spanish as well, in almost Hebrew, Hail Vah. He is God Almighty. All right, the letter K. I don't think that's going to be a hard one for you, is it? The letter K, 
I see King. When I listen to Handel's Messiah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, King of Kings, he's the King of Kings. When I see the letter A in the alphabet, I ascribe the name King to Almighty God. And it tells us that even in heaven, that the four and twenty elders fell down before him at the throne in the worship seat, and they they crowned him king of kings, Lord, and they said, "You're worthy, Almighty King, Almighty God." The letter L. This is an easy one, isn't it? I ascribe loving. I love to use in my prayer, loving Father. He's loving. Don't ever forget that. So many people see him as a policeman. So many people see him as a resident policeman. And, and he watches over and he and he corrects us. Yeah. But, but please see God as loving. When you see the letter L, look at C, loving. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13? And now abides faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is what? You can say, it's okay to say something, church. And the greatest of these is? Love. All right. When I see the letter L, I see the word love. All right, here we go. The letter M. Oh, my. I don't know. There's so many words. And remember, this is not a definitive list. But for me, when I see the letter M, I see the word marvelous. What God does in my life and the life of this old sinner, Ben and Luke John, is marvelous. Come on now. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. Don't you just love hearing some of those old songs over and over? When you see that letter M, you remember God is marvelous. N, the letter N, and I said that for me is new every morning. New every morning. That is the letter. Those are the words that come to me. The steadfast love of our Lord never ceases. Morning by morning. Great is my faithfulness. The letter O. I had to use three letters, three words there. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Those three words for me, for the letter O, these qualities picture the powerful nature of Almighty God. The letter O, He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is uh, omnipotent. That is the God that we serve. Quickly now, the letter P, powerful. There is no more powerful. That word really comes to us in Greek, dunamos, which translates the word, what do you think it would be, dunamos? Dino Mike. What if Jimmy Walker would you and JJ used to say that? Dino Mike. Let me tell you, God is powerful. He's powerful. When I see the letter P, I think of the power of Almighty God. Q. Oh, I'm not going to trip you up. Quintessential. Quintessential. Yeah. You thought I couldn't find one, did you? Quintessential, our God is pure, and our God is holy. Understand that. Isaiah realized that in his state of sin when he said, For I am undone, for I have, my lips are unclean. God is quintessential. R, Redeemer. Don't you remember, Redeemed, how I love you. He is our redeemer. A redeemer is someone who takes the takes up the task of restoring the rights of another person. That's what God is to me. He is my restorer. Because I have made a mess of life. He comes in and he restores me. Yes! Savior! Jesus, my precious Savior. Died on the cross, shed his blood. What more could I ask? He can be your savior too, if you'll simply but ask him to come into your heart. T, true God. 
You know, we live in a world where there's so many gods. And if you don't believe me, just look all around. But there's only one true God. And he is God Almighty. He is Heo God. He is Elohim. He is Jesus Christ. There is no God is the true God. But the Lord is their true God. The scripture says very quickly. You. Two words I had to use. Unequal and unparalleled. Unequal and unparalleled. No one compares to God Almighty. He is unequal and unparalleled, and there's no way you can touch that. Absolutely no way. Psalm says 103 and 103, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. You understand? You understand God? He's just unequal. He's unparalleled. The. Ah, uh -huh. that's an easy one. Come on. Vine. He is the vine. John 15, 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. That's what I think of. When I see the letter V, I think of God being my vine, my true vine. W. Almost things. Worthy. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And you're going to hear that and read that over and over in the book of Revelation. When you get to heaven and you, and you come to the footstool of the Lord and you worship Him and there's that beautiful crystal sea and you hear all of those singing, millions of people singing, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Whoa, my gracious. When I see the word letter W, I think of worthy. X. Oh my. No. The word X stands for extremely gracious. I may have uh, maybe stretched the spelling a little bit, English teachers. But I'm going to say extremely gracious. The alphabet and the letter X doesn't have many words. Okay, I tried thinking about this xylophone. But anyway, it's extremely gracious. Because isn't that what God is to you? He's extremely gracious. Aren't you honored when people are so kind to you when you go to, to places? And they're extremely gracious to you. God is extremely gracious. Why? The letter Y. I call him Yahweh. Yahweh. This is the Hebrew name for God. He said it there in the book of Deuteronomy. We read, we read a little bit earlier. Yahweh. The Helvah. The Elki. And the Hebrew says. But do you understand the letter Y? is Yahweh. And then the letter Z. The letter Z. God is zealous. Zealous. He is so zealous. And you can even find a scripture there, there in Isaiah chapter 9. God is zealous. He is hungry. He wants us. He comes and he wants us. Listen now. You have followed me. The names of God. The name of Zealous. Let's bow our hands. Loving Father. And you are a loving Father. I'm sure if we went around our congregation today, we could we could just name so many more names. But I pray that maybe there's just something learned here today that will be remembered. In a spirit of prayer, would you eyes closed, head bowed, would you please stand with me now, please? The Lord Jesus Christ loves us so much. He's beautiful. His bounty is unbreakable. He's our comforter. He's our deliverer. Everlasting. Oh my. Faithful. Great. 
on and on. I pray today, Heavenly Father, if there's one here who has never said or claimed to any of those letters of the alphabet, they've never said Savior, they've never claimed you as Lord, loving Father, I pray. If you're here today and you never ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your heart, please don't leave here today without asking Him into your heart. I'll give you an opportunity to come forward. If you can never ask Christ to be your precious Lord and Savior, I want you to come forward right here. Everybody's ready. And expanding that, if you're looking for a church home, we invite you here. There's always a place for you. Take care. I have a couple of business points, and for those of you who've been 